Just real quickly before we begin our video about low fluxin, make sure to head over to our site, manmadeeasy.com, and take a look at our quizzes. They're very helpful studying. If you're trying to study for NCLEX or nursing school or whatever other kind of school, they're very helpful, very informative. They help focus your studies. And there's also other products as well. Now let's go ahead and get into this video. Let's begin with our question. A patient has just been prescribed levofloxin. You are looking through their med medical history and see the following. Which would be the most important to immediately report to the on-call provider? A. Myasthenia gravis B. COPD C. Diabetes or D. Hypothyroidism What's your answer? If you guessed A, myasthenia gravis, you are correct. This is a neuromuscular disorder that can cause profound weakness in individuals who have this diagnosis. Certain medications, as you see listed here, among others, can actually cause flares of myasthenia gravis, and this can be life-threatening as it can cause respiratory failure and individuals that often have to end up going on a ventilator. So for the purpose of this video, however, we're going to talk about fluoroquinolone, specifically levofloxin, so you can learn a little bit about this medication. So what does it treat? Levofloxin treats things like pneumonia and intestinal infections like diverticulitis. Levofloxin is often also uh, used to treat urinary tract infections, and also sometimes you also see it for sinus infections as well. Some side effects that are important to note. This is a list of some common ones. Nausea, abdominal discomfort, headache, diarrhea, anxiety, and even nervousness. Now, a super important black box warning for fluoroquinolones is tendon rupture. Now, tendon rupture is more commonly seen or most commonly seen in ciprofloxin. But of course, other fluoroquinolones can also cause tendon rupture, and the Achilles tendon is the most likely affected tendon. Um, some risk factors, or some things that increase the risk for developing tendon rupture is if an individual is older than 55, taking steroids, renal disease, or anybody involved in heavy activity like marathon running, you probably wouldn't want to be taking a fluoroquinolone. To wrap some things up here a bit, if you're studying for NCLEX or just in nursing school and want some key tips on what to know about fluoroquinolones, here's a list for you. Uh, there's some key things like know that they can cause tendon rupture and also, as we mentioned earlier, know some risk factors for that. And also don't give in myasthenia gravis, obviously. Don't take with antacids, it can interfere with absorption. And also one of the most common reactions is the GI side effects, and that's one of the most common reasons for uh, discontinuation of this medication. And also monitor blood glucose very closely. It actually can cause hypo or hyperglycemia. Um, this has been reported. And of course, know some different reasons why fluoroquinolones are used. Well, this wraps this video up. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel and also check out our site, medmadeeasy.com. And stay tuned for the next video.